Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the show. Hope you guys are all having a fantastic day out there. Now in today's video, I'm gonna talk to you about my thoughts on moving forward with this channel. So let me kind of quickly tell you about the backstory of this channel first. In the year of 2016, in the month of January, I started creating these videos and I really didn't know whether or not the uh, the teaching style that I have would be effective at all. And I didn't know if people out there would be uh, interested in watching the programmatic approach of building applications out kind of from scratch, right? So all the results seem positive based on all of the feedback that I've been getting. And it really seems like you guys have been doing a really good job in uh, being able to pick up a lot of these techniques that I'm trying to teach you guys. So now I kind of want to take the channel to the next level and I want to take you guys with me. But what does this mean? So when I say the next level, what I really mean is I want to spend a lot more time focusing on other very important uh, aspects of application building. And what I mean is I want to spend time on perhaps backend building and how to integrate your, your applications so that you can use the backend data. But currently, we're being faced with the constraint of time. And what I mean is that uh, we're actually spending a little bit too much time on some of the more tedious parts of building out an iOS app. I want to illustrate some of the issues that we are constantly being faced with by revisiting the Twitter application that I showed you last Friday. All right, so here we go. We have Twitter loaded up in our simulator. Uh, it's very nice to have a visual, right? And inside of this application, we have a list of two sections. At the very top, we have a list of followers. And then at the very bottom, we have just this section of tweets down here. So the very, very first problem that we face every time we construct our applications is that we sort of need to build this, this collection view of stuff, right? And in doing so, you always have to register a bunch of cells, set up some kind of cell identifier, DQ the cell, return that cell and perhaps set some kind of like model object on that cell so it knows how to kind of render itself. And that's pretty annoying, pretty tedious, and we don't really want to do all that coding uh, every time we build an application. And what makes it worse is that if you have to render out a custom header and a custom footer, you need to register the footer and the header with a separate cell ID and then return these uh, what they call UI reusable views. So a lot of repetitive code and pretty tedious like I was mentioning before. So what is the other issue here? Or what is the second major issue? So in all of your applications, um, you pretty much have to load some kind of image from somewhere. This kind of inevitable, inevitable if you're building out an iOS 9 or iOS uh, application. And the problem is that every time you want to load an image, you have to reach out to the internet, grab it, and then put it inside some kind of view. Usually that involves using an NSURL session and getting the data and then uh, turning it into an, a UI image for the image view. And then the other issue that arises from that is every time you scroll a view, right, you need to make sure you cache the image data properly so that you don't constantly reach out to the network to, to grab more image data uh, than wasting your user's bandwidth. Now, the last issue, which is also pretty interesting, is that you'll notice in all of these, these cells here, you have to properly lay out everything so that it kind of makes sense for all types of devices. So you have a six or a six plus, and then you have your iPads. And every time you perhaps rotate the device or the device shrinks in width, you gotta make sure everything is placed properly so that it makes sense. And what that involves is, um, or typically what I use is, I use the anchoring system that was provided in iOS 9 and anchoring everything um, is what makes the layout uh, work. But then the problem is it involves way too much code and setting things to active and setting translates mass to false or something like that. It's just way too much coding, right? So uh, what is the uh, silver bullet for all of these problems? Well, what I've decided to do is I'm going to open source uh, all the components that I use to kind of build out my production applications, right? And I'll open source it so that you guys can use it as well. So what is this open source package? Well, let me drag in Chrome here. And this open source package is available at this URL right here. So it's github.com slash B-H-L-V-O-N-G slash L-B-T-A components. So this is the Let's Build That App component library. Uh, perhaps I'll call it Libta components in the future. 
But anyways, there's a very brief uh, description, some documentation at the bottom down here in the readme. And it's just a standard GitHub repository. And the way you would integrate it is to use a, a CocoaPod installation. So I know a lot of you guys are all already familiar with that. But what I want to kind of focus on uh, today in this video, so I don't overwhelm you guys too much, is the, this list right here in the middle. And this is a, a very basic list that pretty much all your applications need to render some version of this list of cells, right? And to do all of this, like I said before, you have to go through the process of cell generation, which is pretty, uh, pretty tedious. And what the library allows you to do is if you want to render out this list, you really just need three lines of code. Now, don't worry if this, this bit of code doesn't make sense yet because I haven't really explained it. But the idea is I want to provide some kind of data source to the list. And the data source contains an array of strings in this example. And if I just set the data source of self on this controller guy here to the words data source object, it's going to render out all of these cells just pretty much magically handle everything for you. So that's very easy. And uh, you don't have to do the whole exercise of uh, cell registration. So that's pretty cool. But there is an issue here. And the issue is that this list is not very interesting at all. And if you scroll down just a little bit, um, this list right here is the more interesting of the two. And uh, you'll notice that 90, I'm going to say 95% of all applications found on the App Store have some version of this list where you have this basic structure of a custom header at the top, a custom footer at the bottom, and then a bunch of repeating custom cells in the middle okay and if you kind of um, take a look at this list a little closer what it really translates into is the uh, the, the twitter application here and this top section of who to follow is exactly what is uh, being rendered inside of this example list right you have a custom header a custom footer at the bottom and then a list of custom cells in between so that's exactly what is being used to render out this list. And in order to get from this basic list right here to this list, using the uh, LBTA components library package, all you need to do is to configure the, this list, this simple list, just a little bit and provide it with the custom cells that you need in order to render out something that looks uh, very interesting like this. And in addition to that, the component package, let's see, it contains a bunch of code that will allow you to easily load and cache images like this one right here. And let's see, and this one down here and this one right here. And uh, I guess finally, the last big thing that it provides is a very, very simple anchoring system that you guys have probably seen before. And the anchoring system just uh, it takes one line of code to uh, make sure your components are laid out perfectly inside of your views. And in this example, this uh, view right here is anchored to the left. This label right here is uh, anchored to the right of that view. And this button is anchored to the right of the uh, this cell right here and at the top of the cell as well. So that's how this library works. All right, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. In the next video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to integrate this library into your project so that you guys can uh, save some time as a developer and kind of enjoy your lives. All right, uh, until then, keep on coding and I'll see you next time, bye-bye.